Hi everyone. Um, so what I'm going to show you in this video is uh, so here I've got a Rails app running on port 4000 and I literally just created this uh, Rails app for this tutorial. I'll head over to my uh, browser and you know just on port 4000 I have my Rails app running and uh, I also generated a scaffold, you know, just be familiar with Rails, which you just had a bunch of, you know, stuff. So usually what most people would want to do, uh, usually in, uh, you know, development would be to find a way to expose this app to, yeah, to the internet. So someone else can, uh, you know, use this or, or talk to the steps. Um, and that could be for web hook reasons or bot development. So, and most people use Anchor. And in this tutorial, I already wrote a blog post. I would show you how to build an Anchor alternative with inlets and uh, caddy. So, how do we go from this into mapping a subdomain that we own uh, or a domain that we own? You know, map it directly to this you know localhost web service and be able to expose it to the world without having to use Angular. Now, Angular can be expensive. Check my uh, blog post for more details, but let's see how we could map uh, a subdomain we own to this local running web service and um, without using Angular. So the first thing you need is you need access to uh, a VM of some sort. So in this uh, tutorial, I will be using uh, Ubuntu on DigitalOcean. So if you click on this link on my blog post, you should be able to create an Ubuntu droplet. Uh, so I'll click on that and I'll just select one of the projects I have here. So probably just create droplets on this project, same thing. So I'll just go ahead, select the default here. I'll uh, just choose this $5 a month. And uh, I'll choose Toronto because this is closer to me and I, I have a bunch of, uh, you know, SSH keys already added. You could, uh, so I'll just select all of them. Now, if you, you could also click the new SSH key and there's a, a tutorial that walks you through how to, how to set that up. Or if you just want the password, you could decide that you want to use a, a password to log in into this VM. But for me, I would just choose SSH. And uh, cause I already had some SSH keys set up already. I'll just, you know, check that out. And I'll give uh, this VM a name. So I will just to keep things in sync, I will use the same name uh, as uh, this directory. So I'll just say inlet caddy um, tutorial. Just it here. I mean, you could give that any name really, but uh, I'll just add VM there. And then I think that's it. So once you're done, you're fine with the default, just click on create droplet and then this should create the, uh, you know, the Ubuntu image for you. Uh, once this is done, it will also, you know, assign an, a public IP address and um, yeah, we should be fine. So now we see, I just killed the, the process. So I'm going to go ahead and start the rest server again. Reload the page. Yeah, things are all fine. I can see my Rose app in a second. Now this is done. Uh, we have a VM created. So the next step here is once you have the VM created, you want to map some uh, sort of subdomain to this uh, VM. And the way to do that is to um, you know go to your DNS manager. So I use um, Netlify, and uh, you know go and create an A name record that points to the um, that points to the um, digital ocean, um, you know, VM public IP address. So depending on the cloud server you, uh, you know, you use for creating your VM, you definitely have a, a public IP and you want to create an A name record that points to this IP. So I'll just go over here, click domains. Uh, I have one here, which is my domain. And I'll just go ahead and add a new record. So an A record, so IPv4, yes. And I would also, so we want, we want, so whenever, so we want this to be accessed, uh, let's say in, let, let's just call this app dot the terminal guy dot sh. So that's what I want. Uh, 
So I want to create a new subdomain. I'll call it app. And the value here would be um, the IP address that this, um, you know, this is going to point to. So the IP address would be the IP address of the, you know, the, uh, the VM. I'll copy this and I'll go paste that here because that's what we want. Now, once you're done, you just have to save this. And now that points to the VM. So the next thing we're going to do after mapping, uh, you know, a subdomain to the Ubuntu instance of the droplets, we want to SSH into our droplets and install inlet and caddy. So in order to SSH into this, I will just copy this. Since I generated my SSH keys in this machine, I'll just go ahead and uh, I'll just exit and create a new window. So I'll just go ahead and SSH as root into that VM. Yes, I want to add this fingerprint. And um, yep, now you can see I am in the remote host. Nice. So the next thing is you just want to install inlets. So I'll just copy this over and paste this. Yep, now we have inlets installed, really. That's it. So now we have inlets installed. How do we, now we don't want HTTPS for now. Um, now the next thing you're supposed to do here, like uh, you see here, is just install caddy. So let's just go ahead and follow this. This would just install caddy for us, you know, run the necessary updates and then install caddy. Add caddy to the list of trusted source and I'll just go ahead and still just paste this. Um, so this would do the necessary thing, run the necessary updates and depending on your internet connection, this should be done by now. Now, Cool, so I'll, now the next thing is to install Caddy. Now, one of the things that happens when you when you install Caddy is that um, Caddy gets installed uh, immediately and starts up immediately. So if you do systemctl status Caddy, you see Caddy is running. Uh, we don't want that yet, so I'll just go ahead and stop this. So systemctl stop caddy and let's check the status again for caddy oh, you see caddy now just stop so the first thing we want to do is just to expose this local web server so what we have running on now you see this doesn't work because i mean there's nothing listening on port 80 on our vm but i'll go back to port 4000 and we have our rails app right now I will, now how do we connect this to this, uh, the subdomain right now? So in order to do that, the, what you need to do is, um, you know, create a, an inlet exit server. So basically you just start an inlet exit server on your, uh, droplets. That's your VM. So I am currently in the VM that we created on DigitalOcean. So I'll just paste this and this would start the inlet exit server on port 80 and, you know, using a token one, two, three, the, the token should be more secure, I'll refer to the blog post. Um, but yeah, this is just for, you know, simplicity and, uh, and not to make it, you know, complex for anyone. So now I have the uh, inlet server running on my Ubuntu instance. Now, the next thing you want to do is install uh, the inlet CLI on your local computer. Now, I already installed Inlet on my local computer. So just so you know, I'm using Tmux and on the left side, I am on the my remote VM. On the right side, I am on my local computer. So I already have Inlet installed, as you can see. So I don't have to install Inlet. So I'll skip that part of this tutorial. I already have my Rails app. It could be anything, a React app, any HTTP port you want to expose. So Listen on port 4000 and any ports. Now, the next thing you want to do is expose this, uh, you know, local web server to the, to the internet, to so the World Wide Web. We want to map this directly to this. 
So in order to do that, we've set up an inlet client, which talks directly to the uh, inlet server. So now remind, uh, you should be reminded that this is already, we already created an A name record that points to the um, Ubuntu's uh, VM public IP address. So what we want to do now is create an inlet client. So in order to create an inlet client, so I'll just create a new file here. Uh, I'll just paste this just so I could change this. So the, the subdomain here has to be the subdomain um, we, you know, you, we want to map. So in this case, that's this guy. I'll copy this guy over and I'll just paste this. Now you don't need to include the, the protocol, neither do you need to include the forward slash. So basically we're creating an inlet client, specifying the token, specifying the upstream, which is the, the pots we want to expose, so 4,000. And the token, this is the token used by the server, and this is subdomain. So now I'll just copy this over, and I will just paste this here. And now you can see here uh, that it says handling backend connection, which means that uh, inlet, the inlet client has established a connection to the inlet server. And what does this mean? Now, this means that if we go back here, we have a Rails app working. That's it. That's literally all you need to do. Now, the Rails app is already mapped. So we've mapped our subdomain that we created to uh, you know, a local uh, running Rails app. But, but the issue right now is we don't have HTTPS and you could have problems with this if the um, the, the service you're using requires uh, HTTPS, you, you, you're building some web hook feature and they need an HTTPS domain or whatever the, the, the case may be. Now, how do we fix this? Now, this is where Caddy comes in. So what Caddy is really is just a, uh, I would say it's setbot and nginx and steroids, so it helps you with all the uh, acquiring SSL certificate from uh, Let's Encrypt, and it can also serve as a reverse uh, proxy. So the next thing is we, since we want, um, you know, we want HTTPS traffic. Um, how do we get that done? So what we're gonna do is first thing first is we're gonna stop the uh, inlet server. And you can see we've got an error. And we're gonna make it listen on a, a different port. Now, because I because I want to have I'm gonna I'm gonna need to let's just do this. To make it easy, I would also SSH back into that guy. So I'll just copy over this uh, IP. So I'm SSHing into my uh, VM. So these are all my VM here. So on the left, I have my VM. On the right, I have my VM. I would have started Tmux on the VM, but no. So now in my VM, I would start the um, inlet server on a different port. Now, the reason you want to start, at first, we started the inlet server on port 80, as you can see here. But now we want to reserve that port for Caddy because Caddy is going to need port 80 to handle web traffic. So what we're going to do is actually not expose our inlet server to the internet. So we're just going to put it behind the local port, ADAD. And I'll just copy that and literally just paste that here. Cool. And that's it. Now, the next thing you want to do is, um, you know, start Caddy as a reverse proxy, uh, which will handle all the routing for HTTPS traffic. So in order to do that, I'll just copy this and just change some things again. Now the subdomain here is basically the, the, the subdomain you created. And I'll paste this. And you can see here, I am starting caddy as a reverse proxy and uh, I'm saying, hey, from this subdomain, map to this local running instance. And what this would do is this would be responsible for acquiring an SSL certificate. As you can see, it's uh, just going to consume this here. 
So see, you can see it already downloaded an SSL certificate for us. And pretty much that's it. So now we've got the, uh, on the left hand side here, we've got the inlet server listening on port 80, 80. And on the right hand side here, we've got uh, Caddy as a Revax proxy. Now comes the part where we, um, you know, expose the clients. So just switch back to, uh, so this is my real server. So I'm gonna start an inlet client here. So mind you, here we have the inlet exit server on the left. On the right, we have the um, caddy running as a Revax proxy. Now here on the left, we have the Rails um, app we want to expose to the internet. And now we have to start up a, a um, an inlet client. Now, the only difference right now is the way you start the inlet client when you want HTTPS is different. So it's so we, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and paste this here. Now, what we're doing now is establishing a, a remote connection via WebSockets to the inlet server. So the, the, the protocol has to change and all you just need to do here I'm just replacing this with the subdomain, so feel free to replace as required. And that's it. And this will establish a remote connection to the uh, to the inlet's exit server. Now, if they're um, CADI will be responsible for routing and handling HTTP traffic. Now, before I go ahead and do this, you would see that if I try to go access uh, the site via HTTPS. It's not going to work because, yeah, we're going to have this issue. And you have this 503 error because the server can't undo that now. So I'll just go ahead and start this. And you can see here, it's already connected. Now, this um, log might be misleading, but it is already connected. So if I go ahead and reload this, and you can see we have our Rails app, um, you know, listing on to HTTPS traffic and uh, yeah so that's it within a few minutes we're done we have HTTPS on our own domain uh, routes into our own local instance and um, yeah that's about it now we could, we could we could take a step further to you know automate the whole process of starting off our inlets and in caddy uh, you just refer to the blog post on how to you know automate the old flow with system D oh yeah that's about it. Uh, thanks uh, for for watching and let me know if you have any question. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, like and subscribe. Thank you.